Okay, to update you with regard to this before I go in the next direction, which I, I think is probably a foregone conclusion that we should at least uh, explore this uh, double gable end, maybe even a single gable since that has, is part of it anyway. Uh, for now though, because uh, this is what I felt ought to be tried, we're gonna, I finished uh, exploring this and through uh, the construction of the greenhouse portion to, to the greatest extent uh, possible. Recall this was our foundation work done up through the knee walls. And then from the Soil Innovations website, just using some of their typical details that were fairly close to what they have bid you in a couple of these bids, uh, I constructed some of these details. This uh, section here though, I tried to get away from using two by sixes because I wanted to save you that four inches of width inside for one thing and for two if we we have a good alignment out here right now with what is happening on the corner boards but if we want to make these two by six walls we will lose this will go down to 13 foot four but we'll pick up a the insulation value uh, and b probably a wider sill in here and c probably a little better attachment here right here is what using their detail this was the best I could do to come up with to keep two by four walls but if we do go with two by six walls that means they're gonna this uh, stone veneer portion is going to project in here further by another two inches and so I think at that point if we do that I think then this whole wall just gets you know covered with the same a cultured stone that goes around here and then all of this out here is the same except for these uh, bits and pieces on this wall if you go to two by six walls so that's one of the decisions and then the, the other details I used to construct the thing I couldn't pick up a whole bunch from some of the photos and there's so many different ways to do this I'm assuming solar innovations will uh, put together whatever they need to to fit on our knee walls for now though, I've shown the gutter, I've shown some of the other parts that are detailed in your estimates from them. Their estimates, at least the one I was looking at uh, for the double-ended uh, structure, they were using an inch and a half by, or two inch by five and a half inch beams or framework, like what was done in Warwick, uh, New York. This, because of we have so much big, all of these up here are nine and in, nine inches, all of these verticals are nine inches. So I've designed, what I've designed uses two and a half by four, which is another one of Solar Innovation's frameworks to go up here. And I haven't experimented beyond that. I thought a, a little chunkier, but we can uh, make that lighter. Uh, for now, the idea is to get a feel for which of these shapes is ultimately going to uh, be explored to the uh, construction drawing phase and using the dimensions that Solar Innovations quote is based upon from the ground eight foot from here and so forth. We're a little bit higher here because of the pitch. I mentioned that in the last film. Wrong. Fake news. Uh, their quote was actually for a very similar structure. So uh, that was fake news. In this next section I want to talk about the ranking of these for, of this framework. Uh, and that's one of the main decisions you have to make. I made a decision one way and ran with it for the purposes of the modeling so far. But I wanted to at least show you this. Although it's really, to me, it's almost an, an, a no-brainer. Uh, solar Innovations may have some other arrangement uh, that works uh, better as far as this whole framework goes. But for this section, notice this is divided into beyond the pie parts. This is divided into either four or five spaces, like this. I don't like this one at all. It doesn't really make sense, but uh, these are four foot, four foot, and these are like three foot, three foot, three foot. With a, this extra division here, these all become, these four spaces all become the same. And that actually is a better size for a door. The door can go in any of these bays then, 
Okay, I am just consistently showing it down here. That is another thing that you can uh, let me know on. Because it would work anywhere along here. And here you see, this is what I've gone with. This is dictated, this width here is dictated by the framework up here, I assume, and their connection, what they show as a connection up here. But the rest of these, these are all evenly, evenly sized down through here. And then there's this one, which has about, this might only be 12 or 14 inches wide. But these are all even. This assumes that these up here would be your uh, transoms on both sides. And continuing to build this, I uh, pulled this rock down as I promised I would. And what, I'm not sure this should be this. This tends to get slippery. Uh, so maybe this is just another one of these big rocks that you have up on the other patio. This is how it would shape up. This is the existing uh, ranking on that wall there. My feeling is that all of this comes off from the side of this corner board over i think these are full two by tens on this so that should all be taken off and we will start fresh and redo that uh, in the same uh, style and fashion but rearranging it to suit up better with what's happening with the greenhouse i don't know about this bottom part i mean for that matter you can leave that awning over it i'm not even sure exactly what happens under that but this was my assumption of what was under it I'm not sure which of these, you know, I, well, as we come further along, because we have a section of roof that goes in here, I'm assuming there might be equipment in this up higher part here. And there's the little cricket roof that comes down over. And you can see it built here in the two ways. And imagine that you have equipment. Some We'll figure that out as we get further along. Uh, whether those things come through like that or not. We'll have to be decided. And then finish building this greenhouse structure. Here's how the roof comes together. And I don't know exactly. I haven't communicated with Nicholas at Solar Innovations about how this happens. So my best guess is that if so uh, I don't know what they do in these situations I'll say that much and I haven't talked to anybody about it my best guess though is that this becomes uh, the transoms or the uh, uh, vents down so far and then the rest of this happens or a little differently than what I'm showing I'm showing it like this this is almost a 312 pitch I'm just showing it in rubber though and see I'm assuming instead of glass in these panels here, this framework happens, and I don't show it here in this modeling, uh, but there would be a member across this wall here that these things would die down to a steel member of the same framework from uh, Solar Innovations. So down below, and I don't know if these panels can be available in wood grain insulated panels, for example. So that down below you just see the bottom of those instead of glass, and you don't see any of this a roof framework that, that has to be built on top. But that's a little roof structure that gets it. Now this is all very close call and solar innovations will definitely have some input on positive. As I said though, my guess is that I don't know if this just becomes a little thing that's 27 inch long just to match the length of these transoms or just goes away entirely. And if that goes away entirely it brings up a situation should this all of these go away entirely and all be in some sort of panel and maybe there's equipment up here so as you can see a lot to think about on that whole thing but yeah my guess is that solar innovations would have us bring this edge of this up closer to the edge of their transom which i don't show that it's raised up etc but they'll specify all that i'm assuming or at least help us to pull it together and that was how it looks from the overview. And is that going to feel unbalanced inside? Now, if I was doing this, I would be 
I would be hard pressed on whether I want to fill this because I don't think you're going to lose much any light really it's just reflected light but I'd be hard pressed on whether I want to make this an infill panel that's glass coming through the side so you can see out there but this could be an infill panel if those two stay glass a lot of this comes down to solar innovations as you can tell uh, more looks at this ranking through here with the even spacing and then with that uneven spacing with these these become wider in these here you almost have to put the door in one of these here to make sense uh, and then I as I said through this whole thing I just put the door here just to keep it back out of the way and close to everything else that's happening and, and leave this open for usage and by the way I'll cover this right now uh, you might want to think about maybe it's better and I know this impacts a lot of what we've done so far but maybe it's better if you step further down into this room considering some of your other uh, sunken rooms in the house uh, maybe it makes more feels better and more right with the rest of it if you step from the dining room down into this more than that inch and a half uh, that I was proposing down into this six and a half inches and then down onto the deck the inch and a half so this door comes down some that affects a lot of things I would say the outside of this is about proportional so I would say really the only thing that affects is that this floor drops down and that wall becomes a little higher uh, at this point because I, I really all of this stuff up here is working uh, proportionally nice right now however I would be I'm really torn and if I was making the call I would make this I would make you step down into because it feels right for a greenhouse really so that's another critical question to satisfy and if it doesn't go down to the floor I mean this is a automatic this is an another way the thing just draws itself um, so and that would we have to see I guess that would happen whether the door drops down or not we might see that in another elevation this is just finishing out the greenhouse this is what we're running with all of these are evenly spaced across here except this one because that's dictated by this which is dictated by the width of this when you get it this far along it's not finished but when you get this far along uh, this all looks pretty decent to me Uh, I'm sorry to belabor this point, uh, but here are your main vents or frames or whatever you want to call them uh, with the even spacing and the oddball spacing, which is now should have been a done deal a while ago. And this was, once I had gotten this far along, this was just a quick spin around of the structure itself, just from a couple angles and there are two different ways to save these photos this automatic thing turned on like that or turned off and i'll show you that on another couple of photos and you have to let me know which one is best to present rather than saving two of these to try to get the point across uh, coming back over to the north elevation and finish building it more like what uh, Solar Innovations has quoted with the actual windows. I mean, these are fixed windows up here, but with the windows up here and grids in the glass or on the uh, applied to the glass, actually. None of these models, at this point anyway, are showing any of the special uh, OG type moldings outside that uh, any of that sort of stuff. Uh, if we Uh, if we re reach a point where that needs to be shown, uh, we'll show it. But otherwise, uh, we'll let Solar Innovations drawings uh, provide that sort of detail. We are just trying to see what is going to look best on this house. Now these 
you can't really tell from this one, but and, and these elevation views are a little deceiving because they show the glass feels solid to you. But the grills do make a difference, even though I wasn't inclined to because the house is uh, so without them. But it is a greenhouse, and this takes away some of the apparent mass. I, don't, I think from a real standpoint it won't be as critical, but uh, this does help it, I think. And particularly you can see it from now. This is all clear glass, yes, but it's still a lot of mass, and this helps to break that all up. Uh, now, for most of these angles, I don't have those upper windows. I just have that in glazing, not in actual uh, window units. But uh, again, from this side with the uh, grills. And the other thing that happens here, and I should mention it so we don't miss it, is this stone is pushed, this base stone here, in addition to being pushed down, um, I have that, I think that should be projected maybe an inch and a half to two inches from the face of this brick with some sort of a, a cap and that's what you can see in this and later in some of the rendering uh, photographs is this cap over here dividing this off there's not really a precedent for it there's the stone on the face over there but that's a different more closed situation and this helps uh, this immensely I think and those are just the window indicators with the glass in this situation here dropped just backing this out I think a little bit get a feel for the size uh, even though it would seem like it wasn't that large at least from this angle which isn't a realistic angle it's a, an elevation but that shows you that for the record I think this is working I'm curious to see I think this is probably going to work better than the square end at this point uh, but I earlier thought this wouldn't work at all so let's see what happens now earlier you gave me the actual colors to your house we've been working with something like this my interpretation of what I saw out there but this is the actual thing and this is the, the values that are associated with that and when we apply them to this uh, all your what would be your dark trim this is where we are with that and the middle one is a similar situation the, the, the lighter color uh, renders that when you use the actual values uh, from the paint manufacturer so we have to come to some sort of a consensus on what color out there for this modeling portion feels right most right and, and what has to happen so that we are at least on the right track with that I just lightened that up because I just I just couldn't uh, I don't see that when I'm out there your mileage may vary but to me that looks looks a lot closer to that So that's another thing that needs solved because I have been showing everything in the same or similar color as the house. I, the estimate shows it in Hartford Green, so we're going to show that at the very least. And it's very easy to apply any of these colors uh, to the structure. In this, I go to green. You can't really tell from here, uh, but I do. You can see that the crest. So I have these I have these metal things. They sent me the metal chips of most of these common colors. And I will drop them off up there uh, today on Wednesday. So in some of the recording or in some of the photos going forward, I've adjusted the colors as I've gone along to more accurate representations. This is from a more uh, a place that specializes in color and paint and, and these finishes. And this is the actual burgundy, for example, and this is what is in the SI brochure. So that's not very reliable. I did the same thing with Hartford Green. I went back and tried to adjust that and get it closer to what was real from this same source. These are 
a whole range of these depending upon how that impacts your cost. So, and then here's the whole series of this building from this angle here. And again, here's this exposure. Would you rather see them come over like that or like this? Because I can't do a whole bunch of different things with it. That was complete in the color that matches the house, which would be really close to their uh, sandstone. As you see, I have the chips here. And here, watch this foundation where this really improves everything. And you can see this one over here. It comes up flush. Uh, but this one over here, I think, should be pushed out a little bit like that. It's, I don't think I show it in these photos going forward. This is just a, after this. Uh, this was a rotation after this one. And as you can see, uh, I think it was working. I mean, I think it can work. Because you don't see it like this in real life. Here is where that Speaking of seeing it like this in real life, this is where I apply that Benjamin Moore HC85 to these dark parts. Let me know. Again. And this was with the sandstone, with the green, and this, this was with that Hartford green. And this was a little adjustment to the Hartford green. So, I'm not sure which one's closer. It's probably somewhere between you know like the truth you guys deal in that this is kind of a nice if this was the actual colors this is pretty sweet uh, but I don't know that that's the color in real appearance and that is their regular bronze what I thought was pretty close to it it's probably a little bit more blue than that again the light and the dark rendering. Now this is their uh, one that's a little darker than sandstone, which is putty, something like that, or natural clay. And that is the end of that. Uh, for now, I think I have a couple uh, films. Uh, there was just a few other things that came up uh, during this editing of this film and they I felt they should be included with it. For one thing I found a more accurate representation of their ridge cresting in the fleur-de-lis so I kind of adjusted the model that I had made of that and I added the actual vents uh, just because we'll need them for any model we use we're gonna have to have those. So I did that but also, this is a different kind of a development. It is the one without automatic, but then once it's in here, I auto-correct it. So if this is a more preferable, um, and I'll show you a few more of these so that you'll be able to tell maybe 
and have a uh, preference or a consensus. But this is the thing, yeah, these are that same final improvements on that structure uh, with that, with those colors we've been working with. And then that's, and then this was the, these were all uh, the improved, the, not the improved, but the uh, auto corrected in the picture manager. And this was before auto correction. So I would think that that's preferable. Uh, but let me know. Uh, in any event, when I was taking these photographs, I noticed this patio. And I, if you recall in the first film, I had arbitrarily cut this here because uh, the deck had stepped down there. As we developed it, we found out that the deck was going to be all one level out here. So I'm not sure that is, we're going to get into cutting that wall anyway and rebuilding it, uh, another section across here. So I'm not sure whether it's just better just to put this out here. Now notice I'm showing a structure over it because that's what uh, brought it to my mind that you could continue some sort of structure over here. It doesn't have to be enclosed, but for rain cover. I don't know how any of that impacts uh, a greenhouse performance or whether it was even something to be considered. But covering aside, this wall change, probably this makes more sense regardless. It's probably less expensive uh, than to do uh, this whole bit here. And that would all, in the event that this was covered, that would all stay one level. If it were not covered, then that would slope down to this and down. And then I went ahead, because it was so easy, to model this in case it was something uh, that wanted to be considered. And these are the just the turnaround of that. And the same turnaround when I auto-correct these. So let me know. Uh, and I believe that is it for now. I will do my best to cut it short.